God bless you, family. So, have you guys heard about coming up on October 4th, and if bad weather, seven days later, October 11th, um, some government entity in conjunction with the FCC is going to send out some emergency text alerts to everyone in this country. Uh, they say it's like for emergency preparedness, and they're going to have a special tone or sound to it as well. I know many of you have heard of this. And it's so interesting because when you think of the situation in Maui, like they didn't send out any alerts for, for you know, their directed energy weapon um, slaughter on innocent people. Of course, they wouldn't send that out. But now they're going to do that. And uh, so October 4th or October 11th, if there's bad weather. And it's interesting. Remember years ago, like under Obama's administration, they're saying, you know, Get your free government cell phone. Like everyone's got to have a cell phone. And years ago, when televisions went from analog to digital, everyone's got to have digital. You know, the devil plays the long game. <clears throat> and um, so everyone's got to have these devices in their hand, in their home. And then it, coming up here shortly, October 4th, you know, isn't that kind of crazy to think about it? We're going to be hearing this, this pulsating sound, this frequency. It makes me think when the Lord spoke, you know, vibrations, speaking, things were created. Vibrations have power. Um, a lot of these governments have these, um, the, this techn these technologies that can, you know, create vibrations and create earthquakes. They can do that in conjunction with things they spray in the sky to create weather. U.S. government has patents for this, for uh, geoengineering, cloud seeding, etc., etc., and that's coming up. And it's crazy. Just the other day, I did a little test and I put some aluminum foil over my cell phone and tested calling it from another phone. And it does sufficiently block that. And, um, you know, my people perish for lack of wisdom. God's word tells us. And it just makes me think, come this day, you know, if we're still here, if we're not caught away by then, which maybe we will be. Um, I'll probably wrap up my cell phone and just... Um, because I've heard even if you try to turn your cell phone off, like they could still power back on. The sound and frequency could still pop off. It's going to be crazy. But, but, despite the, uh, you know, the impending things that we hear that are just troubling and it's like, what is next? In my scripture reading uh, for every day, I wanted to read a bit about uh, John chapter 4 when he's talking with the woman uh, at the well, the Samaritan woman. <clears throat> And, um, you know, he, he's talking to her. She comes to faith, believing on him because of what he preaches, what he's talking about. Um, and it's very fascinating because while in Samaria, I'm going to read a little bit regarding this. Jesus had enjoyed his first unqualified and unopposed success. His own people's hearts were not open to him, but exhibited reluctance and hardness. So, yeah, these uh, these. Samaria, people from Samaria, these half-breed of Jew and something else. Um, the Lord had a success. And, and the point of what I'm talking about is what is the believer's role in the evangelism of the world as we are called to be witnesses of Jesus, to uh, give a testimony, a, a good word on, on the good news, to testify what has the Lord done in our lives, right? So I want to read just a few sentences regarding... Um, evangelism in conjunction with this scripture and, you know, mentioning this October 4th thing that's coming up in the bad news. Like there's a lot of distractions and, and a lot of these things are legit and they're coming. And the devil certainly wants us distracted and fearful, but we have not been given that spirit of fear, right? So let us keep these things on our radar. Let us be wise by the Holy Spirit and do the things we need to do. Um, but the spiritual preparedness is very important. I would say even more so than anything else we can do. And um, and just spreading the news of Jesus to more and more. We're going to be okay. Come what may. Come the worst calamities if anything hits us before our catching away. Um, you know, it's uh, we're covered. We know where we're going. It's all good. But this is a good word and I'm glad I read it today. So... In the context of the Samaritan woman and village coming to faith in Christ, Jesus spoke of the harvest and the need for workers in John 4.35. Jesus used the fact that they were surrounded by crops growing in the field and waiting to be harvested as an object 
lesson to illustrate his urgency about reaching the lost. Isn't that on our hearts? My heart, that's my heart. That's my spirit. That's the only reason I'm still here. Let me be a blessing, which the harvest symbolized. <clears throat> the event probably happened in December or January, which was four months before the normal spring harvest, mid-April. Crops were planted in November, and by December or January, the grain would be sprouting in vibrant green color. Jesus points out the Samaritan woman and people of Sychar, lift up your eyes, he says, who were at that moment coming upon the scene, verse 30, looking like a ripened harvest that urgently need to be gathered, right? Oh, the compassion of Jesus. He sees these people coming, and he makes that analogy. He's like, look, behold, the crop. They're white. They're ready for harvest. That's people we see today. Um, and I'll read on here. Example, evangelize, to be gathered to the harvest, white for harvest. Their white clothing seen above the growing grain may have looked like white heads on the stalks, an indication of readiness for harvest. Jesus knew the hearts of all, so was able to state their readiness for salvation. Isn't that cool? Jesus is God. And he saw these people coming and he, he could tell because he's God. Like which ones were ready? You've seen that and just imagine like if we have some spiritual glasses and we could see those who are ready to receive the word. Jesus saw that and he pointed that out to people. He could see the ones whose hearts were ready and he probably saw some that, that were destined to not believe, but he saw many that were. That's encouraging. This episode represents the first instant of cross-cultural evangelism. The Lord's call to his disciples to do the work of evangelism both then and now contains promises of reward or wages, fruit that brings eternal joy and the mutual partnership of shared privilege. That's right. Paul spoke about this too. Some plant, some waters, water, you know, the, the, the crop and others gather it. We play a part and who cares if, you know, what part of it that we are, but praise God if we are useful and playing a part, um, that's a fantastic thing to be used for another salvation. Um, this is great. When he talked with the Samaritan woman, Jesus was performing the will of the Father and thereby received greater sustenance and satisfaction than any mere physical food could offer him. Remember, his disciples were coming and I think they were saying, like, come and, and, and eat and stuff. And, and Jesus said, I have food you don't know about. And they're wondering, what is that all about? Um, and he said, verse 34, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Yep, because a few verses earlier, uh, in the mean, while his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said it to them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Okay, so he's talking about that obedience. He's a man on a mission and it was gratifying to him. He was like, oh, this is, uh, this is satisfying for me to eat. <clears throat> Jesus was performing the will of the Father and thereby received greater sustenance and satisfaction than any mere physical food could offer him. Obedience to and dependence upon God's will summed up Jesus' whole life. Ephesians 5.17 also talks about this. Certainly the same is true for any follower of Christ. So guys, as you continue reading your scripture, growing in sanctification, becoming more and more like Jesus, you're going to find that you can fast long, longer, you can go without food. If you're in the midst of doing something that's a blessing, that's some kind of ministry unto others, you're so satiated and, and um, fed by that, that you might be skipping meals or you might be like, oh my gosh, like it, I missed dinner by three hours or whatever. Um, and it is enough because just like God's word said, and just like Jesus said, when you're a man on a mission, when you understand what you're here for and what God wants you to do, um, guys, there's nothing more fulfilling. Many of you know what I'm talking about, right? So be encouraged. We've got bad news, freaky things. We've got all those things that um, Matthew 24 talks about, the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes in diverse places, um, households divided. Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace, but to bring division. He is a stumbling block, and woe to him who stumbles on him. He is a rock of offense. So we know these... Uh, this, this walk is difficult and challenging daily. Jesus said you will have trouble. But greater are we, greater is that spirit in us than the spirit that's in the world, right? We have the Holy Spirit, so we are uh, well covered. 
And guys, keep your eyes open for those opportunities to evangelize, to share, whether it's a word or a kindness. Try to incorporate some kind of words pointing people to Jesus. Um, the Holy Spirit will give you boldness at those times, I do believe, as you uh, continue striving and having that desire and that spirit to be a blessing. So be encouraged. Bring October 4th, come what may. Um, the Lord is still going to protect us. He's still going to, we're going to have our Red Sea moment. I do believe that. So almost like I would encourage you, and I'll end with this, almost laugh at the calamity that's <laughs> being telegraphed. They're showing their hand, whether it's true or not, they might be bluffing about a lot of these things. And when I say they, it's these devilish people who are you know, going to be part of this wicked beast system once we're gone. I've become more like that where I chuckle when I see these things. I'm like, oh, really? Is that what you got? I'm like, you know, I still want to be wise and not cocky about it. But I do chuckle and say, my goodness, are you kidding me? You're coming against the Lord and his children. It's like, that's foolish and you're going to lose. Even if we were to be killed, we still win. So be encouraged, guys. Continue to um, just share a little bit of Jesus with, with anyone you come into contact with. Always be praying the Holy Spirit. And I just be obedient to what he would call you to do. That's uh, the next best step in any situation. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Have a great night. God bless you.